Hey, Tony Connor here with another quick watercolor painting tutorial. I know you want to jump into this one, but in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe so that you'll know when there's something new that we've got up here for you to take a look at. And maybe take a look at my website, watercolormethods.com, where I've got over 200 watercolor painting lessons and tutorials. And now, let's take a look at this one. And this lesson will be painting what's essentially a stormy day at the coast, a stormy seascape. And we'll put that initial layer on again. Stormy day. I'm going to paint around this, the edges of this rock. This rock is going to be darker than the sky, so eventually we'll paint over it. But again, I've got some white water in here. And then I'm going to bring that wash right down into this area. Now there's some white water in here, but I'll bring a little bit of that color in and back in here as well. Not brown gray, there we go. More like this. And I'm just making some strokes of paint kind of with the edge and the tip of that flat brush. And then I'm just going to let that mix and mingle into the sky back there. And this is where I'll indicate the horizon. And again, that, that's that edge that we really need to be nice and horizontal back there. Now, it's, again, it's soft. Really left to right. It's going to mix and blend in that wet area. Again, kind of the corner of the brush following the pencil lines that I've got in here. So I've got white water up here. This is a wave crashing in. It's in the foreground. It's closer to us than the rest of the water. And using the same a rock here. The rough marks that you get are actually useful in an ocean. It can look like uh, little bits of foam and water mixing together. There's another wave coming in here. Some of it is white water, some of it is darker water. A really kind of dark blue for this wave right here. Now there's a rock sitting down here at the bottom. And there's white water right in there. I don't want to disturb that just yet. There's white water that comes down through the center here. But corner of this, start to in the distant water, indicate some action of the waves. And by uh, to do that, really, it's just a matter of getting those gentle, upside down, shallow V shapes, which essentially show the Kind of that shape, that typical shape of waves in the distant water. Still a gray, blue-gray, but it's somewhat darker color. It works really, really well. Starting to get a little bit into this white area. This is the foamy area here in the middle. Here again, I've got a nice wave coming in there. I'll get a little bit of color around it, but I'm going to leave most of that there. Let's really get this wave that's crashing in here. Let's get the dark top on that right now. I like the little bits of white highlight back there. I'm going to leave those. And my brush strokes go in the direction of the wave. Very important in a seascape. Really an angry looking ocean, isn't it? There's a good bit of that rough looking texture in the surface of an ocean as well. Flatten out. This is about where the trough of that wave comes in. Again, there's foam down here as well as uh, darker water. I'm going to try to show both of those. I'm going to start back here on my distant rock. Now that edge is dried back there, but I've got a couple marks here that indicate crevices and cracks. I'm going to try to get work around those. And as I get down near the edge of the water, what I want to do is create soft edge here, soft texture, like the water is splashing up on that rock. And then for the really darker parts of the rock, which are the faces that are really the ones we're looking at that are pointed towards us. And then get some of this color in there. Put another little darker rock there, maybe even over here, kind of behind that white 
wave that's crashing. And I'm going to do the same here on the group of rocks that's here and the group of rocks that's down here, raw sienna, a little bit of lighter brown. Clean the brush, get some clear water on it, and again, soften it up. Some of my gray-blue to get some darker wave action back through here and then maybe even out here. I left some white here that's outside the drawn edge of that rock, so I'm going to work up to that. And they come down to here and there. Got some rough edges there along the bottom, that's good, but I'm going to want some soft edges as well. So those two textures, the soft and the rough, really important in a seascape, especially where there's moving water like there is in this one. A couple areas, darker areas on these rocks here in the foreground, and since I've put that water at the bottom edge, it's going to blend and soften as I put these brush strokes on. This one, this top edge is really overlapping the water, so that can be a nice hard edge or a rough edge. A rough edge is actually better. Overlapping the water, and so we're seeing the edge of the rock. We're not really seeing white water coming up to the rock. Show some of the faces of the rock, maybe cracks and crevices as well. Same thing for this group of rock. burnt sienna maybe with a little bit of blue in it. Makes that really great dark color that we can use for showing what are really the shady or the darker faces of these rock formations. And I'll test it just by again using the side of my brush with those directional strokes that are following the movement of the water. A little, little bit of this on the white wave that's back there and a little bit here and especially over here. I want to get a little bit behind that bit of white water and a little bit in front and a little bit running through. I'm going to darken this wave that's coming in here. I've got some darker grays, but I, I feel like I want to darken them even more. More of that here in the foreground, especially right there. Let's get a little bit of that down here in the foreground. Again, this dark wave that comes down from the left, swings through the middle, and then back up kind of to the right. but keeping our, for the most part, our white water in showing in that foreground area. And I'll start making some, again, rough brush marks that look like they could be the texture of the rock itself. Across uh, flat horizontal surfaces like this, maybe there's a crack there. Use the corner of my brush for that. out here, especially maybe along the edges, and then again on this rock, I'll do some of those marks for some texture on, on that more or less vertical face, and then here's a horizontal face, get some rough brush on that. Here will work very well for that rock, maybe here too. A little bit of this out here, I see a spot there that I think could use some texture and really want to include it in the, the uh, mass of rocks. I think these rocks could be a little darker and I'm just going to use this brush to do it, at least the tops of them. Maybe here as well, a little bit, a little bit of darker value back there. And again, make some now some textural marks, some rough brush marks. Now there's, the edges are softening a little bit, but I'm still getting some of that rougher texture that I want, like right there, for instance. These are light strokes, again directional strokes. I'm going in the direction and the movement of the indicated movement of those waves.
Again, I just want to make sure that this dark shape here looks like that wave that's coming crashing in. We've accomplished what really what we wanted to do here, and that's to get that effect of a stormy day at the coast, that rough water, a lot of foam, white water out there uh, that really has a creates this visual path again between where we're standing on these rocks and out to that distant, that massive rock that's farther out there in the water.